This plot is used to classify the various chondrites by their bulk chemical composition. For this on the y-axis, the composition of the metride or a specific element is normalized to Ci and to magnesium, and in this case in 8%. On the y-axis are the different chondrite groups, for example, Ci chondrites, M chondrite, Cv, and so on. The metrides are then further separated in their larger classes, which are carbonaceous chondrites, ordinary chondrites, enzyme chondrites, and the R and K chondrites. There are also some ungrouped chondrites. The lines then represent elements of various cosmochemical characteristics. The first two here are refractory elements, and these refractory elements are generally enriched in the carbonaceous chondrites, as can be seen here, and slightly depleted in all the other chondrite groups. Also, they usually are very similar in composition. So this means there is um, some enrichment of refractory elements in the carbonaceous chondrites and some depletion in of refractory elements in all the other chondrite groups. Now the carbonaceous chondrites have the most, uh, the highest modal abundance of calcium aluminum rich inclusions and their enrichment is usually attributed to of refractory elements to these high abundances of CIs. For example, CV chondrites have the most CIs between 3 and 2 volume percent. Then the next elements are the major or main elements, silicon and iron. Magnesium is not shown because it's normalized to magnesium. And it can be seen first that silicon and the ma magnesium silicon ratio in carbonaceous chondrites, except for CH, which might not be the correct value, are typically one. So the same. So magnesium silicon is about one. This is very typical of the carbonaceous chondrites. However, silicon is then enriched in all the other chondrite groups to various extents. So there's an enrichment of silicon or a depletion of magnesium. This is um, not known yet. But this is a very important observation because these are two major elements and it's quite difficult or it requires the fractionation of a lot of material to achieve these changes in magnesium silicon ratio. Now, iron is also um, depleted or enriched in case of CH chondrites to various extents, typically slightly depleted, and this might indicate some metal silicate segregation during formation of these metrides. Finally, there are the volatile elements, moderately volatile elements and some higher volatile elements, and these are depleted to various extents. So the moderately volatile elements are depleted in the carbonaceous chondrites to quite some extent, about 50%, and less depleted in all the other groups. Although volatile elements in general are always um, depleted relative to CI chondrites. The highly volatile elements are depleted in all the chondrite groups except for EH chondrites, which is until now not known why this is the case. The seeming direction here is simply because the groups down here have been sorted in the way so that um, by, by increasing volatility. Now the question is, what is the reason for these um, depletion in volatile elements. So what is the reason that, for example, carbonaceous chondrites have volatile element depletions? Now there are basically two possibilities. Say there's a meteorite, and it's possible that it lost volatile elements due to evaporation. It's then also possible that the meteorite formed in a reservoir. So this is some reservoir and this is the meteorite, and this reservoir might have a temperature of, say, 900 Kelvin, for example. 
And then, then the material condenses into the meteorite, or the precursor material of the meteorite. There might have been an incomplete condensation. And this incomplete condensation primarily affects the volatile elements. Now, a simplistic explanation for this could be that there's a sun in the center of the protoplanetary disk. So this is the protoplanetary disk here. And then there's some temperature gradient from the sun outwards. So this is temperature, and here's a temperature gradient. The meteorites that formed in regions where the protoplanetary disk is high, the temperature in the protoplanetary disk is high. So here, for example, these meteorites, these would then be volatile depleted because there was incomplete condensation. So this would represent these meteorites. Whereas, for example, CM chondrites, which have higher volatile element contents or ordinary chondrites or so, could have formed more at the outside of the disk where the temperature was lower, so all the volatile elements could have condensed. But this is a very simplistic view. In any case, it's possible that there was evaporative loss of all the volatile elements or there was um, incomplete condensation in a reservoir with higher temperatures. And these are the basics um, 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 associated with this plot.